Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. The truth is out there, is it? Getting scared. Mm. Uh, we're going to go uh, full George Nori here for this uh, segment. Uh, they, all this talk of UFOs and UAPs. You know what a UAP is? Unidentified aerial phenomena. Oh, now I do. You got to get the nomenclature if you want to uh, talk about this. Uh, make sure that um, uh, those uh, who have their eye towards the celestial. Uh, you know, see you as having credibility on oh, the topic. Oh, okay. It's been interesting, though, all this discussion, in part because of... The uh, footage has been released. Yeah, the, right, and the disclosures, and you have uh, former, like, serious people, former military pilots and stuff coming forward to talk about what they've seen. And President Trump and President Obama have been talking about it, too. Yeah, Obama said some weird things weird. about it. Like, uh, you know, he's been talking about it in a podcast recently like this. I would hope that the knowledge that there were aliens out there would solidify people's sense that what we have in common is a little more important, but no doubt there would be immediate arguments about like, well, you know, we need to spend a lot more money on weapon systems to defend ourselves, which, and, and, you know, those, their new religions would pop up and who knows what kind of arguments we get into. We, we're, we're good at manufacturing arguments for each other. New, new religions would pop up. I, uh, what? I, I, I pray to the alien gods. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I think he's, you know, um, what, watching trying to many, be relevant. Too many sci-fi movies. So, uh, are these things real, or is it just like Musk, Bezos, and Branson flittering around the universe? Uh, what are we seeing out there? For more on this, please be joined by Lawrence Osborne, British novelist currently residing in Bangkok. His most recent book, The Glass Kingdom, and he has written about uh, the matter of UFOs and the Spectator. Lawrence, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. My pleasure. What, what, the, just even the the interpretation there of uh, what President Obama had to say, we'd uh, if if uh, we there was proof that aliens existed, that uh, it would immediately devolve into uh, arguments for enhanced weapon systems and, um, and, and and new religions popping up, and so on and so forth. Uh, I, I, what, what is your take on the implications of the arguments that are being had right now as to whether or not these things are real or, the, you know, the UFOs really indicate some sort of uh, alien life form or not? Well, whether they indicate some form of alien life form or not, it's be decided. But we can no longer go along saying that they're not real because we now have some pretty substantial amounts of evidence that suggest that they are real. The Pentagon has not come out to say that um, the debunking theories are valid and they're not casting aspersions upon their own pilots who are seeing these things or upon the equipment that is recording them. So we have a dilemma here. I think it's what Obama is saying. He's saying basically that um, it may be that the government doesn't quite know what to do because if they, if they come forth and they have a press conference and they say, yeah, this is all real, and we don't know what they are, uh, and they could be, uh, it could be a form of visitation from uh, you-know-where. Um, it's true that the, there would be mass hysteria all over the place. It would be one of the greatest events in human history. If it's the case, and then they do think that, I can understand why they'd be shying away from it. This would be the biggest story in the world. Um, and I, actually, in a way, I think it already is the biggest story in the world. It's curious, and um, I mean, Sam Harris has said this somewhere, that it's curious how little attention it's really been getting. And this is because for 70 years, um, the UFO, the whole UFO movement, of which I am not a part, by the way, I'm not a UFO person at all, um, but that movement has attracted its fair share of cranks and nutters yeah. and and we don't want to get full you know, by, crack bots, you know. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> yeah, we don't I mean, you know, we all know who they are. We don't want to get fooled by Orson Welles again, you know. Well, yeah, I, I mean, yeah. you know, of, of course, it's very, uh, and I think this is also why scientists are being super cautious about uh, coming out on the coming off the fence on this. They want the evidence. Um, I did a Spectator podcast with Tim O'Brien, the astrophysicist who's involved in SETI over in the UK, and he was like. Actually, he was quite open-minded, and he said, we're not dismissing it among ourselves, because we don't know what these are. We're actually quite intrigued, but we're not going to come out and say one way or the other until, you know, the evidence uh, firms up. Now, this uh, begs the question of what the evidence would be that they would accept. I mean, and you're, you're often given the, uh, the comical example of you know, someone landing on the White House lawn and, and 
Well, of course, that's not going to happen. Um, you know, it's probably it's going to be more tangential as it is now. Um, I think we take this step by step. I think I think probably the government is quite alarmed about not creating panic, not creating hysteria, just gradually letting this thing percolate through in a gradual way so that people get uh, gradually acclimatized to the idea. And I think that has already happened anyway, because after the New York Times published the uh, videos released by the Pentagon in 2017, the David Favor, uh, the three videos of, uh, taken by S-18 pilots, you know, I think that caused a lot of people to uh, pause and, and think, well, okay, now we have to deal, now we have to adjust the paradigm a little bit. And, um, you know, be skeptical, be cautious, be rational, um, don't lead to conclusions. But also stop laughing and stop dismissing it. I think that that's where we are now. Well, I've always equated, you know, believing in UFOs to then believing in the Loch Ness monster or Bigfoot. But when I saw that video yeah, from that see. U.S. Yeah. Navy F-18 jet from 2004, I mean, th- there was something yeah. definitely there. But has there been spottings since then? Oh yeah, many. I mean, the thing about it, the three videos um, that are famous now that, that that are out there that you can you can find on YouTube. Um, are from 2004, I think one is from 2014 and one is from 2019. And they're from, um, some are from the West Coast and some are from the East Coast. Like the, um, the original ones in 2004 were taken by uh, David Flavor Squadron uh, in 2004. That was off San Clemente Island, uh, just off San Diego and Pacific from the S- uh, USS Nimitz. And um, the, other, the later ones are from the um, USS Theodore Thier- Thier- Roosevelt and Omaha on the East Coast. So, you know, you have, uh, but, but remember also, these are just the three, these are three videos that Luis Elizondo got the Pentagon to release through the Freedom of Information Act. It doesn't mean they're the only ones they have. Uh, and well, of course, right. uh, quite famously, you know, Harry Reid, uh, Senator Harry Reid has been saying for years that, yeah, actually, we have a lot more than that. Uh, you're, not, you're just seeing the tip of the iceberg. Um, you know, it's all, the, it's all a question of uh, what gets disclosed and what doesn't get disclosed. Well, and that's a very tantalizing element to this. Of, of course, because it feeds the conspiracy theories about uh, you know it more does. that, you know, yeah, right. Yeah. What, what do you yeah. know? Uh, you know, where is E.T. Um, uh, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, but with respect to uh, the claims about UFOs, there are scientists who are suggesting that there's nothing to see here, so to speak, uh, that it's. It's it's dr- drones from foreign countries right, and 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 you know yeah, yeah. and just the nature of the atmosphere. It looks like it's something, but yeah, it isn't, yeah. and so on and so forth. Can I give my opinion on that? Yeah. Oh, well, um, so a lot of a lot of people point out these arguments. Um, this assumes that the Pentagon hasn't done the same. So the Pentagon, which has a budget, I don't know, equal to the GDP of Spain. I mean, these guys have plenty of scientists and engineers and whatnot. They've been looking at these videos for 17 years and maybe longer. And the Pentagon, to the best of my knowledge, has not validated any of these debunking claims or arguments. They haven't, and if, and if they believed that it was atmospheric conditions or weather balloons or optical illusions or faults in the equipment, blah, 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 if any of that was the case, I kind of think the Pentagon would have said so by now. I think that would be the easy way out for them. Uh, for them, it would be much better if that was the case, and I don't see any reason why they wouldn't just come out and say it. They haven't, and there's obviously a reason for that. They don't believe it. Um, now, as far as, um, you know, there's one, you may remember there's one video of an of a object skimming across the surface of the, uh, surface of the sea, and if people have claimed that it's just an optical illusion created by the velocity of the plane and so forth. Well, you know, pilots who fly F-18 um, fighter planes are trained from day one to distinguish aerial phenomena. It's a matter of life and death and a matter of national security. If it was a wake from a commercial airliner, yes, I think they would know what that would look like. I think they would know what birds look like. I think they would know what weather balloons look like. Why? Because they see them every day. They see them every hour. It's not just, um, you know, they are able to, and the pilots are like adamant. They're like, no, we're not seeing, that's not what we're seeing. We're seeing, we're recording them on the cameras, and we're seeing them. We're seeing them behave, inter- they interact with us. And it's not just one or two. We're seeing, you know, remember that, I don't know if you saw the uh, 60, min- 60 Minutes segment with Bill Whitaker, uh, where Ryan Graves, one of the pilots on the East Coast, was uh, asked, he's now retired, he said, how many of these things did you see on your, during your, uh, your active service? And he said, I was there 
there for two years, every day. We saw them every day. Wow. Hundreds of them. Were there people inside? Are you, sh- are you <laughs> oh, sure? Hi. Are you sure it wasn't? Mind boggling, is it? Yeah. Are you, are you sure it wasn't Greg Brady with a gazoo and a flashlight uh, just manipulating? <laughs> are you sure? No, it could be Elon. It could be. It could be Elon Musk. You know, as I said at my teeth, because you know when SpaceX was was, was being tr- was being tested, you know, it was producing these very spectacular light shows at night, and you know, people driving on remote roads and wherever it was would be stopping the car and taking out their iPhones and, and saying, "My God, aliens are here!" and so on. They turned out it was SpaceX. So yes, I mean. But here's the thing. If, if these things are real, and if it is, let's say, for the sake of uh, argument, it is a visitation, right? Mm-hmm. Even if that was the case, you would still be having all the fake stuff at the same time. It's not that you would have one or the other. They can't all be real or all fake. You're going to have a mix-up of the two things continuously. You're going to have the optical illusions. You're going to have the atmospheric effects. You're going to have the space sectors. You're going to have all the military things. And then you're going to have the real things at the same time. So it's a question of sifting through uh, the fake from the real. And I suppose you could say that about 10% of these things, 10, 15%, really don't have the explanations that you would expect. Hmm. And that's why and that's why we have this situation now where, you know, this is why the Pentagon is saying that it doesn't know what they are. That in itself is a major story. Yeah. Because you have things in your airspace, you have things in your airspace that the Pentagon doesn't know what they are, Never mind scientists who think they blah blah blah. It doesn't matter. What, well, are we trying to are like? we yeah, trying to okay. capture? What, I mean, what are what are we trying to do in order to protect America? So was, NASA's too focused so on what equity is, what, what, to what pay is, attention to what's flying around. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I think the pilots are, the, the, are going. Look, we don't care what they are. So David Faber's point was, he's not a UFO guy. He says, I didn't believe. I never thought about UFOs. What I was worried about when I was, when this thing was flying around us and we were in F, the F 18s couldn't catch them, I was thinking to myself two things. One, I'd love to fly that thing. And mm-hmm. secondly, what the hell do we have in our airspace that we can't catch with the most sophisticated machine the human race ever produced? Mm. That should be cause for concern. It's, it's not, I mean, you could even drop the UFO stuff if you don't want to go there. I mean, just leave that to one side. I, I, the idea that yeah. Russia right. or China? Nah, I don't buy that. Yeah. You, know, you think Russia and China are decades ahead of us? No way. No. Their budgets are a fraction of ours. I don't believe this. Like, well, I've, no, I've got. I'm convinced now. I've got an. I, I've got an idea. Um, so there's a, a petition circulating online to not allow Jeff Bezos to re-enter the Earth's uh, airspace uh, after he launches on July 20th, <laughs> <laughs> which, which I, you know, I'm, I'm inclined to be, I'm inclined to be supportive of, but I, I'm going to offer a friendly amendment. I'm, impl- I'm inclined to be supportive of that. Yeah, say. yeah, me too. He's doing this July 20th. That's soon. Yeah, um, and and who, who knows where he's from anyway? <laughs> well, exactly. And he's going back to his home planet you uh, go with the nba commission i think yeah. he's yeah, yeah, exactly adam silver, <laughs> adam silver and him are from the same planet yeah i think they're cousins uh but he can come he can only yes, come sir. back to earth if he uh, solves this uh, riddle that we have with respect to ufos he's got to bring back a ufo or bring back an explanation of what we're, what we're saying and then try to sell it on amazon yeah or he or musk can go up with them and they can do like a reprisal of gravity where I'm going to say Jeff Bezos has to play the George Clooney character, oh, and Musk okay. gets to be Sandra Bullock. <laughs> uh, all right, Lawrence. Well, clearly Elon Musk is somebody from that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Lawrence Osborne, British novelist, uh, currently residing in Bangkok. His most recent book, The Glass Kingdom. Lawrence, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Have a great day. Thank you, and he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. If you're talking about it, Dan and Amy are talking about it. It's Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560, The Answer. Every family has been touched by an illness or disease that could have benefited from more medical research. However, did you know that most nationally known research organizations that receive annual donor support either use or advocate for the use of embryonic stem cells and aborted fetal tissue in research? The John Paul II Medical Research Institute, a nonprofit research organization located in Iowa, is opposed to such immoral practices and utilizes only adult stem cells to conduct ethical research in the hopes of discovering new treatments and cures. To learn more about their novel research in the areas of neurodegenerative diseases, rare diseases, cancer, vaccines, and more, and to support their efforts in finding cures while also upholding the dignity of all human life, please visit jp2mri.org. 
That's JP, the number two, MRI.org. Please join them in the fight to promote ethical medical research. If you have school age children, you're thinking about summertime, not back to school, but you better start thinking about back to school because it's right around the corner. Can you say with confidence you know what school will look like for your kid this fall? Will they be back in the classroom five days a week? Well, thousands of private school students were in person in school for the past year and will be again next year. If you ever thought about private school but didn't think you could afford it, think again. The most affordable way to send your child to a private Christian school is through halfpriceschools.com. Right now, vouchers are available for 50% off the normal tuition for private schools across Chicagoland, including but not limited to... Lake County Baptist in Waukegan, Faith Evangelical Lutheran in Antioch, Ravenswood Baptist Christian in Chicago, Kingswood Academy in Darien, and many others. Go to halfpriceschools.com, search for a private school near you, and purchase a voucher today. Then prepare to send your child back to school this fall in classroom to a school you can trust. Visit halfpriceschools.com. This is attorney Stephen Leahy. This isn't the first crisis we faced together. Back in 08, business professionals in trouble sought help from bankruptcy attorneys, loan modification attorneys, foreclosure defense attorneys, and IRS attorneys trying to gain full financial recovery. They should have just called me. Let me tell you about Chuck. His small business crashed in the 08 crisis. He faced two foreclosures, overbearing creditors, and the dreaded IRS. Chuck would not even...